So I'm going to talk about a topic today that I don't think I have touched since like 2013, to be honest, and that is going to be whether or not you should just say screw it with PC and get a console. NZXT's BLD is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator, which now includes Intel's 14th gen CPUs featuring faster cores with increased core counts and speeds up to six gigahertz for an overall better gaming experience. Don't want to build it yourself? Then choose from BLD's pre-configured player PC systems built with performance and various budgets in mind. To see the full lineup and specs of the NZXT Build Player Series pre-built PCs, follow the sponsored link in the description below. Okay, so the conversation of console versus PC has been going on since probably the Atari, to be honest, and then the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo and GameCube and N64 and all that stuff. And, and it's just gone on and on and on because there is, a, there is definitely two schools of thought when it comes to computers versus consoles. So today we're going to talk about whether or not you should just kind of say screw the idea of building yourself a computer or buying a pre-built and just getting yourself a console. So there's pros and cons to both, obviously. Um, and the reason why we're even having this conversation is I've actually been noticing an, like an uptick in the amount of inbox questions I'm getting about whether or not they should just buy a console. And I was actually having a conversation recently uh, with someone who is not a PC enthusiast in any regard. They have a laptop for work, like that's it. And they don't game or anything like that, but they have a kid. And they were just like, should I get a computer, you think? Or do you think I should just get a PlayStation 5? Right, this person has not like played games at all since they graduated college a few years back, and now they're kind of getting some free time back to themselves after they're done with their graduate program and stuff. And now they're just, I have some time, so what should I do? So it really kind of got me thinking and get some real food for thought here. And an unbiased one, because one might assume that because I am a DIY PC builder, that I would just automatically be like PCMR only, you know, console peasants. And I don't actually think that way because fun fact, I own a PS5 as well as multiple computers. Technically I have a PS4 and the last Xbox I had was actually the um, Xbox One S, I think it was, but um, yeah, Xbox, you know, we'll talk for a second here. This kind of shouldn't even be considered, to be honest. There's no reason. Microsoft has actually made it pretty obvious and pretty public that they're moving away from the whole hardware side of things because with Xbox, um, the Xbox app on PC, when it comes to Windows-based PCs, you can pretty much get any game available on Xbox on a computer. And guess what? It's gonna run better on a computer than it does on an Xbox. However, but that also means exclusives too are available on PC that are Microsoft exclusives on Xbox. So that line has been drastically blurred. There was actually quite a while there where you couldn't get Xbox exclusives on PC, including Halo and stuff like that. Like Halo was like the Halo title, no pun intended, for the Microsoft platform, that being Xbox. And then with PlayStation, specifically PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, like the Sony exclusives are, that line is starting to blur now to where a lot of the, the titles that you would want a console for, for exclusivity, which was really the main selling point of wanting a console, is starting to make its way over to PC. Now the most recent, very big, very large IP that made its way over to PC uh, was The Last of Us. And that was a completely remastered title. So they, you know, the, the game itself is like 10 years old, the first one. Um, so that kind of shows like for PC owners, if I didn't have a con I didn't have a PlayStation when The Last of Us was out and was huge. I heard everyone talking about it. It was all over YouTube. It was all over Reddit. Everyone was just like losing their mind over how good the story was. And I was just like, cool. I don't know what it is because I don't have a PlayStation. So obviously when it ported over to PC and was remastered, I was extremely interested in it. Fun fact though, it kind of really correlated with the launch of the TV show um, and so on HBO. And so it really piqued my interest because I saw the show first, then I played the game. But uh, console uh, ports, or I should say exclusives on like PlayStation are starting to make their way over to PC more regular now where it's about a year or so, but a lot more studios are making it obvious that they want to support the PC gaming platform as well, because let's face it, it is a huge platform. So one of the positives to consoles, like we've talked about is the fact that you're going to get like those day one exclusives available to you uh, right off the bat. Now, most consoles now are moved over to digital format as well. They do have discs available to them too. That was one of the things that was a positive to consoles in the past, but not quite as much these days was the fact that if you had a game, you had a disc, you were done with that game, you could sell that game to a friend, make some money back or online or whatever. You could sell the, the disc and then that person could play the game. It wasn't DRM'd to a console or to, a, to an account. Because of the fact that discs are kind of archaic at this point and there are still disc versions of the consoles available, 
almost everything now is digital content. So initially one of the downsides to consoles was the fact that you couldn't necessarily expand the storage. Now on, on Xbox, you could get an external hard drive hooked up to it. It was a spinning drive and it was actually quite expensive to get those external drives plugged into your Xbox. It was a good chunk of the cost of another Xbox. Or you could sell your Xbox and try to get one with the larger storage inside. Now back then, like a 256 gigabyte Xbox was like huge. Like 120 was like the max for the longest time. And then there was like 40 gigabytes, which were like the base models. And you might've been able to hold a couple of game saves and such on there, and maybe a couple of downloaded titles, but you still heavily relied on discs. Now, fortunately, especially specifically the PS5, we even, have, we even have a video about this. Because I use NVMe drives, there is an NVMe expansion drive in there. So you can add storage to your PlayStation and it's extremely easy. Kind of a plug for our old video. I'll try and make sure I annotate it or have it in the description. It's very easy to do that with any modern NVMe drive. So what was initially a con is now kind of a positive for consoles because of the fact that you do have upgradable internal storage. Um, let's talk about PC for a second here. One of the biggest cons of PCs, especially over the last few years, is its initial adoption price. PCs are gonna be significantly more expensive than a console. Even a quote unquote $500 PC, which you could technically build today, especially using like an APU or an internal you know, GPU with modern 7000 series AMD processors or Intel processors, they're not, believe it or not, a $500 PC is not going to be as good as a $500 console when it comes to graphics fidelity and overall playability, simply because of the fact that we are talking about such a huge hardware iteration com com configuration possibility when it comes to computers that you just don't know how the title is going to run. There's too many different graphics cards that you could potentially put in there, the different types of storage, different CPUs. Are they old CPUs? Are they newer CPUs? Whereas on console, the gaming experience is universal for everybody because of the fact that there's a specific set of hardware that the developers can then you know, optimize for. That's why there's always a difference between PC titles and console titles that are cross-platform and such because of the fact that it takes time to make sure that they're at least optimized for both. More often than not, they're optimized for console over optimized for PC because they'll just rely on the PC's brute force approach to having better hardware to run a game that maybe isn't quite as optimized. The downside about console is every time there's a new generation of consoles, the brands, Xbox has done this as well, tends to leave the older console titles behind. What I mean by that is there's not necessarily forward disc compatibility. So if you are running, like if you had a PS3 getting a PS4, a lot of the times those discs would not work in a PS4. Same thing when it comes to Xbox. If you went from like an Xbox 360 to an Xbox One, there was a list of titles where they were compatible, where you could take an old disc and run it on the new platform, but it didn't always guarantee that it was going to work. So it was kind of like you had to sort of cross-reference whether or not an old disc would work in a new console. So you can't upgrade it either. You can't upgrade the experience. You can't make it faster or stronger. Not to mention as consoles are coming out with new revisions as time go on, like now we have the PS5 Slim. This is not a Slim, this is like the very first OG PS5 before they even started changing the coolers and stuff inside of them. There's no, there's no hardware changes that you can really upgrade and make your experience better. So they target 4K, but for most titles on like console, they target 4K 30, which is your, if you're a gamer, you know 60 FPS is the sweet spot. Like you, you want 60 FPS or higher when it comes to gaming. The nice thing about PC is you can build a $500 PC that can give you 60 plus FPS in 1080p medium settings. And even PC at medium settings is going to be much nicer to look at than the way that the graphics are basically out of the box configured for consoles. Not to mention you can't even really go in and adjust most of those uh, graphic settings in games and console because again, like I said, they're very locked down to the hardware that's known to exist in that platform. Now I think this conversation comes up a lot because in the earlier days of consoles, they they weren't like mini PCs like they are today. You couldn't surf the internet, you couldn't check email, you couldn't download apps and watch things like Netflix and Hulu, HBO, YouTube. But now they realistically are like all-in-one type PCs that you plug a TV up to it or a monitor. They already come with a controller, which is another con for PCs. It's spent another 50, 60 bucks to get a controller at least. They come with at least one of them. They can pretty much do most of what a computer can do these days. Now a computer can do all of that stuff better, not to mention a computer can do all sorts of things a console can't, which is you can use it for work. Spreadsheets, email. Yes, you can email on a console, but it really sucks to try and type with a controller. So unless you're gonna hook a keyboard up to it, doing the whole like one letter at a time while writing an email would really, really suck. 
But when it comes to console, the streaming is very basic. With a PC, obviously, you can do a full OBS type setup and get a very uh, high-end gaming experience and streaming experience for your audience on PC. Um, you can upgrade it, like I've already said. You can start out with parts that maybe are uh, just enough to get you by today, but making smart choices means you give yourself an upgrade path and make sure that you have uh, options in the future to be able to upgrade the system without having to change your entire platform. Not to mention you can make it yours. Aesthetically, you can choose a case that you like. Um, you can go with parts that are either aesthetically pleasing or you can go super basic, no frills type parts to make sure you're getting all the performance for the money that you possibly can without paying for any of the extra features that are just maybe fluff, if you will. Um, but not only that, we know a, a, a computer is gonna, most of the time, unless you go super bottom spec, are not gonna, the PC is gonna last you a lot longer than say a console. I mean, consoles tend to have about five to seven years worth of life. That's it, the console doesn't die on its own. We all know about the old red ring of death. We all know the blinking lights of death. All the things that have been known to happen with consoles. I, I think I went through three Xbox 360s with the red ring of death before I finally got one that didn't cook itself to death. But I think realistically when it comes to computers though, it's not just about gaming on the computer. It's not just about watching content on it or whatever. I think for a lot of com computer enthusiasts, it's more than just gaming. And it's about the connection you have with building the tower, upgrading it, tinkering it, making it yours, truly customizing it, and having an endless amount of options and combinations of parts and configurations, which is for me, that's what I enjoy most with computers. I play my games. I don't have a huge catalog of games. I kind of one of those people that play one game at a time. So storage size on a console wouldn't be that big of a deal for, for me because I would just play one game and then when I'm done with it, delete it, install another one. Um, but for me, the fun and enjoyability of a, com of a computer and PC gaming is the PC itself. Like I love to just, how can I make it mine? And I think that's what a lot of people who have built PCs, especially their first PC, they kind of say it becomes addictive. I've had people email me and say, I built my first computer and that wasn't enough. So I started trying to find anyone I knew that wanted a computer and I would build it for them for free. And it was just fun to go along for the ride. Even my daughter, one of my re recent videos, you guys saw her in the background. The reason why she was here that day is she'd been bugging me for a couple weeks saying, I want to build a computer. I'm like, you don't need a computer. You have a very strong computer. You have an 11900K, you have a 3080 and you play Roblox. What the hell do you need a new computer for? She's like, I just want to build the computer. And I'm like, fair enough. Brought her to work, brought out parts and just let her assemble the computer. It worked, it posted, she was super excited. So that's the passion I wanna sort of nurture, especially with my own, my own kids and friends. But I think my channel is about nurturing that for people as well. And you're not gonna get that with a console. It's not to say consoles are bad. Consoles do exactly what they're meant to do. You push a button, you probably are gonna to have to wait for an update at some point. You go to your game you wanna play and it works. It works just about every time until something in it breaks, which every console has had some generation of known problem that's gonna happen. The same thing can happen with a computer though. You might, your computer might be running perfectly fine and then suddenly one day you get a blue screen of death and it repeats and it's over, happening over and over and over. And then that's where the frustrations happen with beginners and newbies when it comes to computers is not knowing how to show up, troubleshoot or diagnose. That's where they're like, where do I bring it? What do I do? Typically you go to YouTube, you start doing a, a search to see if anyone has any videos about the problems that might be able to help you fix it. And that's why channels like mine exist. But I think more importantly, it should be less about PC versus console because both are really the same thing. It's just, this is a very big, very customizable, can do just about anything type of console versus this having a very narrow niche purpose. It's a little wider now, like I said, with all the entertainment apps and stuff available on them as well. But I think anyone that's ever moved from console to PC, I, more often than not, I hear that they got bit by the PC bug and now they are just, that's what they wanna do. They wanna build computers and stuff. I've had people even tell me they've made career changes. I'll go, I won't say his name, but I got an email from someone recently telling me they started watching my channel when they were like 12. I was like, thanks for making me feel old. They are now literally an AMD engineer, so, there's that, right? It's cool to see people find a passion and move forward with it. I don't think a lot of people carry passion for consoles, but I think PC might open up an entire world ahead of you that you maybe never thought could have been part of who you are in the future. So just wanted to kind of put this video out there, giving you some food for thought about both. Pros and cons, we'll, we'll go through them again real quick. PC, expensive initial cost. It's expensive to get into. Like, a real solid gaming PC, 
Every gaming PC makes a great work PC, but not every work PC makes a good gaming PC. It's important to remember that, okay? But I think you're looking at like 1500 bucks or more to get a real good PC that's gonna last you for years. That's three times the cost of PS5 or an Xbox if you, for whatever reason. I mean, this really belongs over here, okay? They're the same thing, they truly are. You don't need a, an Xbox, okay? The, you can play every Xbox title on a computer. That's why the Xbox app is pre-installed in Windows. This, on the other hand, um, it's, it, okay, we'll go back to the pros and cons over here, but it's expensive, pros, it's very powerful. It will give you much better frames per second. It'll give you much better fidelity, meaning your, your game's gonna look sharper, more tact, a lot of features that are be enabled in a game uh, on PC versus the same game on a PlayStation. It's gonna, it's just overall the experience is gonna be good. The downsides too, if something goes wrong, you gotta be able to troubleshoot it and fix it unless you go with an SI that has a warranty to help back you up. They're bigger, they're quite a bit bigger. They consume more power. So if power costs and, and energy bills are something that's really important to you, that's gonna be more on that. Um, and then don't hook it up to a TV, please. Even, even a gaming TV, like I'm currently still using that LG, really trying it out. Monitors are designed with super high refresh rates, very quick response times, which are gonna be fine on console as well, but console has other input latency and lag and stuff outside of PC. The overall cost of this is just the number one con. Pros on a console. They're assembled, done, ready to go, plug them in, set up your account, you're up and running. Um, they're upgradable now in terms of storage. Storage is something that, like I said in the past, you couldn't really upgrade unless you change the whole console out, console out itself or hook up an additional external storage, which is also very slow. Uh, and then the other pro is gonna be the fact that you get the exclusives on day one of their availability and they take time to make their way to, to PC. It could be a, a year or like in cases of like The Last of Us, it could be 10 years, who knows, right? We're still waiting for Last of Us 2 on PC, just saying. Uh, cons though, they can break, they do break. Just go and look up any of the PS5 like blinking light of death or the Xbox 360's red ring of death. I don't know about much about the, I don't know, and the Xbox One had issues too. I forget what it was, but anyway, um, they exist. You can find millions of posts about those problems. Um, the other downside is the fact that they're not upgradable. So as hardware progresses in the future, when titles are designed and built, those engines are and those titles are built around the hardware that exists at the time they're developing the game. Now, yes, it can take five years to develop a game, but there's such a time gap that happens in a leapfrogging effect when, when games are developed versus hardware that's available. By the time it comes out, you know, a PC could be upgraded if it's not fast enough for a modern title or you don't meet minimum requirements. You cannot upgrade a console. So any title that exists for the console that comes out later it's gonna probably be a really turned down version of the graphic settings in those games, and they will just look terrible on console versus PC. Lots of videos of side by side where you can see major, major differences between a console version and a PC version. Another downside too is it's not a full function computer, like a computer is. You know, there's so many things you can do on a computer that are outside of gaming and stuff. Like would I have ever thought that my passion for computers would lead to a complete career path change and owning my own company talking about it? I, mean, I guess you could do that about consoles as well, but um, it's, I think there's a lot less passion surrounding a console than there is for computers. But that's a personal choice. That's a personal, I may not be important to you. But then again, 500 bucks, all in and done. Anyway, there you go, guys. I just wanna put out this video. It's something that's kind of been on my mind lately. And I went, I wanna put something out there for people right now that might have been on the cusp of trying to decide, is now the time to build a computer? I mean, prices have sort of returned, like pretty much have returned to normal. I'm gonna do a video here in the near future where we look at something like a 3080 versus like a 4060 to see whether or not, you know, where are we now with hardware prices and performance and stuff? And is it worth just buying new versus used, et cetera. So we'll do more stuff like that, which I think is really up a lot of people's alleys because of the initial buy-in costs, like I said, it's very high on PC. So sound off down below, do me a favor, put your top five reasons why you would choose one over the other. And be brutally honest, I think this might actually start a little bit of a war down there because for whatever reason, I think people just decide to pick one side or the other. But you can also be like me and just own all of them. 